My name is Moshe Braun. I'm a Judaic artist and a sofer. I was born and raised in the United States in a conservative traditional family. I went to public school all my life and went to Hebrew school in the afternoons. Ever since I was three, I was, uh, was drawing. They used to start out three scribbling. My parents encouraged uh, all of us to pursue our talents. So in school, it was just natural to be involved in art class. So I applied to art school and uh, the University of Michigan. Every Friday night when I was growing up, we would have Shabbos dinner. My mother would light Shabbos candles. My father would make Kiddush. So my first Shabbos, I went to, Hill, to Hillel and I sought out kosher food. And that brought me into a very nice group of friends of all types. Um, varying, varying degrees of, of uh, religious observance that kind of like typified my four years in Ann Arbor that during the week I'd be very involved in the studio and what I was doing and with sort of a one group of friends but come or Shabbos I was with the crowd in Hillel. My artistic development and also my spiritual development were two things that I was taking very very seriously at the same time. Now, when I graduated university, I decided I was going to take a break from my design career and focus on my Judaic studies. My kala was, fiancé, was very supportive of that decision. So we got married in Chicago. I started studying uh, at what's called Skokie Yeshiva, the Hebrew, Hebrew Theological College. And my wife was going finishing university. We continued this. Um, until my wife graduated university and at that point we decided that it would be better for us if we would go to Israel to continue our studies. And I enrolled in a yeshiva called Darche Noam, uh, Chappelle's College of Jewish Studies, and my wife at their sister school, Majesh Rachel Vachaya. And we came when our first son was six weeks old. We moved into the basement of the yeshiva, into a tiny apartment. You can't be here and not help but gain an unbelievable inspiration and appreciation for the land of Israel, for everything that it, everything that it is for our people. And that's what happened with us. But back when we were getting married, I designed and created and calligraphied our tuba. So my, my chavrusa, my study partner at the time in Skoki Shiva, saw that I did this and said he was getting married soon. He asked me to create his. And that it just started that way, one friend to the next. So I took my industrial design portfolio to a very senior industrial designer who had been working in the field for decades. He got to the very end of the portfolio, he saw the Judaic pieces. And when he saw that, he stopped. And he looked at those pieces, he looked at me, he looked back at the pieces, and he just said, you should be doing this. That was it. That was the, that was the push. So I continued to, you know, from word of mouth, one person to the next, begin to gradually, gradually build up my, uh, the work that I'd done for people and my portfolio along the way. And all the way, all the time, use all the artistic techniques and methodology that, I've, that I had gained over the years and infuse that into my Judaica. It's been a long journey, but it's been a journey that's been focusing on taking quality and the quality of artistic technique and taking what we call token ideas, knowledge, and to and hopefully, hopefully provide inspiration. Kevarachal is known. This is one of the places when you're here in the land of Israel to go and to pray and to pour your heart out to God. So I wanted to use basically two things, more light and more color. Color in a way that really hasn't been used before for this type of piece. When you're working with pastel, you're working with 100% pigment, which means the results you're getting are vibrant. When you're looking at the piece, it shows dawn. Dawn or the changing from light to dark or dark to light. A change that comes about because of our prayers to God. The birkat abayat means a home blessing. A kamea is a text which one does not say, but is composed of different Kabbalistic, um, mystical terminology. The Kabbalistic, mystical combinations of these names and words come together and the effect is one of what's called Shmirah, 
or guardian of the home. Now the text was composed by someone called the Yismach Moshe. Yismach Moshe was a very famous Hasidic Rebbe and Mekubal mystic who lived approximately 150 years ago. For this piece, I wanted to highlight the text. So the text is in the middle of the piece, and I wrote the piece first on cloth, on parchment, in scribal writing. And around the piece, I designed a whole series of illumination of artwork. Each corner of the piece, I put a mini painting. And each mini painting is a painting of a mitzvah that is specifically connected to the home. So one corner has the mitzvah of mezuzah. Another corner is a painting of hachnasat orchim. Another painting has the mitzvah of uh, tzedakah. The final corner has the painting of shalom bias, peace in the home. That's illustrated by flowers. I called up experts at the Israel Museum and I wanted to find out what is one of the ideal materials to use on parchment. So they told me that egg tempera. So I used egg tempera and I also used paper cutting where I did a lot of intricate cutting in and amongst the vine work and the lattice work. And the wording that goes under each one of the mini paintings, the letters themselves are cut out. And I like to contrast that with the bir katabayat because the words bir katabayat are larger. They're at the top of the piece. But there I painted the letters in a very traditional style and then I cut out around the letters, keeping them still linked to all the vine work. So really the piece is a combination of many, many intricate elements.